Hello and welcome to another devlog of Cable. In this devlog we've got a lot of exciting progress to share, so let's begin. Our game is currently in a state where we could go in many different directions, so we asked our community on Discord, link in the description. And the clear winner was farming. So we immediately started working on it. First we added a corn plant into the game, but it seemed very generic and boring so we made it alien-like with red kernels instead of yellow ones. To be honest, it looks more like a flower or something, but it works. Then we added carrots, cabbages, onions and broccolis into the game. It took me a while to get it all saving correctly and syncing everything with the clients. We also thought a lot about what you will actually plant on. One way would be to do it like in Minecraft. By using a hoe you could make a farm block and then plant on it. But we didn't really like this idea and ended up with this approach. Soil blocks. You'll find them scattered all around the world, or you will be able to just craft them from certain materials. If you have any other ideas, comment down below. In the last devlog I added a non-functional furnace, so a logical thing was to get it working. I made some UI for the furnace, and after a few attempts it was working quite well. Then I worked on the actual furnace logic. I'm quite proud of this system because when the furnace isn't open, nothing is happening. Because of that you can have hundreds of furnaces running at once with no performance issues. That was time to sync everything with the clients. At first I thought I would do the standard approach where if one player has the furnace open, other players cannot access it. Games like Terraria and Valheim do that. But I wanted to complicate everything and make it so that everybody could use the same furnace at the same time. This was kind of a terrible idea and it took like 3 days to get it working, but I think it was worth it. There are probably a few duplication glitches that I haven't found yet, but I'll worry about them later. Then I added a chest, which was super easy because most of the stuff was already implemented. Now when I think about it, I should have probably started with the chest. After that we added torches, which was a thing that we should have added much earlier. With a furnace, a chest and some torches, you can already create a cool looking base, but I hated that you can see the biome background. So I added these wooden background blocks. They work exactly like any other block except that you can move through them. And finally, you can create bases in cave. They're not the best looking bases since you're only using a few types of blocks but I still think that it's really cool. After that, I made a new lighting system. This is like the fourth time I'm tackling this problem, but anyway, I ended up totally getting rid of Unity's universal render pipeline and implemented completely custom lighting. It works quite simply. You pass all of the lights to a compute shader, it generates a light map, and then another shader applies the light map onto the screen. You probably can't tell the difference between what I was using before, but it's actually a lot better than URP. My solution is like 10 times more performant and can support a ridiculous amount of lights at once on the screen, up to 300, before it starts slowing everything down. So yeah, another performance upgrade for Caver. Talking about performance, we really want this game to be accessible and so that everyone would be able to play it, even on a potato. I tested Caver on an old laptop and the frame rate never goes below 400 FPS. It's crazy. Another thing that was bothering me was the lobby screen. When you press the start game button, you would join a lobby and after your friends join it, you could start the game. The problem was that if somebody tries to connect when you're in the game, it just wouldn't work. So I scrapped the lobby and made everything much simpler. You start the game and the game starts without a lobby. As you can see, I added a loading screen which uses this awesome fanart by Sir Tartarus from our Discord. We'll change the loading screen to someone else's by the next devlog, so post your fanart in the Discord. Anyway, I also implemented threading to the world generation, so that the game wouldn't completely freeze while loading. It was actually much easier than I thought and did it in a few hours. The system isn't perfect though, I had to change a lot of networking things which are boring and let's just skip over them. Also, when testing the game, I realized that the crafting is completely broken, so I basically remade it from scratch. 
It doesn't look super clean, but it looks much better than before. It opens and closes with the inventory, so you're only using one key instead of two. Next thing, cooking. Our artist drew these awesome alien looking cooked food sprites, and also this cauldron, which we call the cooking station. It didn't take me that long to implement cooking into the game, and the UI still looks kind of clumsy, but everything works. You can cook items one by one or mix them. For example, one raw meat plus three vegetables will give you a meat stew. We haven't implemented the mixing yet, but we'll definitely do that before the next devlog. If you have any ideas for some interesting food ideas, comment down below. Recently, I got my hands on a game called Core Keeper. It has a very similar concept to our game, so I had to try it. One thing that I find extremely cool is the way they handle biomes. In the starting area, you have biomes that have easy to break blocks and easy enemies. But as you go further away from the spawn, you'll reach more difficult biomes, which contain better ores or more difficult enemies. That I think is very clever and creates an awesome progression system for the player. We wanted to do something similar in Kavor because currently our biomes spawn very randomly. So in this cool diagram you can see the plan. We'll have four types of biomes. Starting, Farther, Far and End Game. And on the right we have the world map. You'll start the game in a starting biome and as you progress the game you will explore more and more difficult biomes. On Desmos I made this graph. That's how the biome separations will probably look like in the game. We'll implement this in the next devlog. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Currently our goal is to get a store page running, but for that we need to have at least a bit of content in the game. So we're just trying to implement as many game mechanics as we possibly can. Before the next devlog we're going to add enchanting, villages, and the new world generation that I talked about previously. Don't forget to join our Discord, subscribe, comment, and see you later.